Since the beginning of the Troubles, more policemen and UDR soldiers have been killed in Castle Derg, proportionately speaking, than anywhere else in Northern Ireland. Nestles close to the border with Donegal. It's surrounded by crossing points into the Republic and bears all the scars and destruction associated with a frontier town in a state of war. Over 50 bombings have taken place in the very centre of this town. It's actually even taken the heart out of Castle Derry as far as the business town is concerned. It used to be over 20 years ago one of the most uh, prosperous towns even in the west of the province. Economic decline, bombings and shootings a way of life and death, it's little wonder feelings run deep. The numbers of, of folks who have been killed in the security forces and the, the feeling of many people that they have at least been set up by local men, uh, by local people, by folk that they possibly uh, played football with when they were small, uh, folk who would have known them. Um, the fact that Sinn Féin gets such a large vote in this area, um, I mean, that, that is something that I am trying to come to, to understand what is wrong with this area, that there's that amount of bitterness. Even harder to bear is the knowledge that there's no sign of an end to the killing. The real question is, who will be next? William McRae is MP for the area. He refers here to something that was said to him at the most recent funeral, that of Alvin Kilpatrick. Well, I'll never forget that scene coming out through the gates of the cemetery. Several members of the security forces approached me, and they said these words to me, I'll never forget. They said, Mr. McRae, it's a sad day. I said, yes, it is a very sad day. I said, Mr. McRae, you'll be back, I'm sure, soon. But it'll be some of us you'll be carrying in through the gate because they're going to do it again. Nothing is there to stop them. Castle Derg has a population of around 4,000 people split evenly between the two traditions here. Sinn Féin have the majority of the nationalist vote in the area. Because of government restrictions, they cannot be interviewed directly to account for IRA violence. But as it was the Protestant community who were suffering most from this, did Ivan Barr accept there was a deliberate IRA campaign being waged to drive them from the town? Certainly Mr. Barr denied that there was any evidence to suggest that. He said that IRA operations in the area were carried out against members of the security forces. He accepted that these were mainly Protestant. When asked if the strong Sinn Féin vote in Castle Derg gave the mandate to the IRA, he responded by saying that it gave a mandate to Sinn Féin. When pressed on whether the IRA was carrying out Sinn Féin's policy, he said that while Britain retained a presence in the six counties by force of arms, there would always be patriotic Irish men and women prepared to use force to resist what he termed the force used by Britain. A vast countryside here, but there's no security provided for the people in the area. Well, the, the, this is a thing here has been uh, a reduction in security access is the new changeover. But, the, but, but the, you know, the security force members are scattered throughout this countryside that we're traveling in. Yet there's nothing to protect them. We accompanied William McRae and Thomas Kerrigan on one of their frequent tours of the border. One stopping point was where the IRA had dumped a getaway car. And this is the road here, and you can see uh, right where we stand here, there is uh, a way round, actually, the, the blockage here, which leads back into the south. Just, just behind our yes. uh, car there, they, uh -huh. they took the, the road round and therefore they're able to get quick access into the quick south. Quick access into the, the south. This is what we've always maintained in this border area, that there is a safe haven. Back in Castle Derg, I asked Mr. McRae what he concluded from his observations. Well, I think that um, what we did today and what I have already done on previous occasions have proved that although there are several hundred soft targets 
that is members of the security forces and ex-members of security forces, living in the area that we visited. Yet there wasn't one army man, one policeman, or one PDR man in that complete vicinity. We travelled two hours the other evening, we travelled a couple of hours today, and we saw absolutely no security on the ground at all. Does anyone understand what it is for me as a Member of Parliament to go into home after home after home after home? Sit with a widow, take up on my knee or talk, trying to bring some crumb of comfort to a little child whose dad is murdered. Does anyone understand what it is? I certainly feel deeply and deeply moved that this area has suffered so much and yet at the end of it all, nothing is being done to stop the crime. What makes those remarks even more alarming is the following interview. Normally, the discipline of the security forces prevents regular soldiers speaking out. But this UDR man, angered at the killing of his colleagues and friends in the Castle Derg area, has broken rank and spoken out, giving a rare insight into the thoughts and frustrations of men who put their lives on the line. There's an area to the, to the southwest, west, and northwest of Castle Derg, where there, there are, are over 20 roads that go across the border. To, and various stages of being open. And these roads are freely available to the terrorist 24 hours of the day. Now, we drove around that area this morning and there was no sign whatever of security force presence. That is that is a typical situation. And there seems to be no will on the, on the part of the, of the command to make that area secure. What is the reality in your experience? The reality is that there are large areas of Northern Ireland where there is no security presence. And there are even larger areas which are not controlled by the security forces. What do you think should be done? I would like to see an end to the policy of establishing no-go areas. Because if it progresses <coughs> at the rate that it has been over the last 12 years, in another 12 years, there will be very little except no-go areas. So you're, you're actually saying that such things do exist in, in real terms? Such things exist in real terms, and they exist in particular in the area that you've asked me about, in the area west of Kessler. Quite a number of your colleagues have been killed. How is it that they are so vulnerable? Well, it's, it's quite easy for someone employed in a police station or army base to find out the names and addresses of members. And quite a number of people also feel that information is sold. In another programme, government ministers will undoubtedly be asked to account for a security policy that provokes soldiers like the one you have just heard to speak out in the way he did. In the meantime, the people of Castle Derg have to face the reality of their daily lives with the knowledge that for some of them, death may be only moments away.